Whoa! Beautiful F1. Damn! There we go. Lovely fish. Absolutely lovely. Well, here we are at the wonderful Rookery Waters, and as you can see, the weather's absolutely awful. It is going to rain all day, but we're shouting from the wind. We're sitting on Magpie, and they've introduced some new F1s. I think they've put like a thousand pounds of F1s from three ounce to two pound in all the lakes just to give it a, a surge of new fish. And I'm just going to take you for a simple session of pellet fishing and my approach, making it very simple and for you lads to follow and hopefully put a few fish in the net. To start the session off, I'm going to introduce a small ball of my lovely Hinders Sifu mix. It's an expander mix and it contains certain additives that just seems to turn on those F1s to feed with pellet. And where it's getting a little bit warmer is the reason I'm introducing a little bit of ground bait, just to put a little bit more food into the water along with some micro pellets. So I'm going to kick it off with a small ball and a few micro pellets on two lines. The main thing is not to put all your eggs in one basket, just all down one hole. Always have somewhere to go with the fish back off. It's no good fishing one line and then after you catch your fish after an hour, it dies. Then you've got somewhere to go. So if you prime another line, you've got somewhere to go to where fish hopefully will be feeding and then you can rest the other one. Putting a four mil expander on there, turning it round. And just put in half a dozen pellets in my pot. Tap those pellets in, lay the rig in, keeping the bulk shot away from my pole like in a pendulum, let it settle down. Then lift it up so it just straightens out, just to float six inches, then drop it back into position. And with the bulk shot I'm fishing on this rig, there we go, you can see the bite straight away. I've got a spread out bulk rig there as well, for if they do come up a little bit in the water. But always start on this rig. Now I'd say that's an F1, but I may be wrong. Yeah, one of the new F1s that they've stopped in here. I mean, these are absolutely perfect condition. Look at that, beautiful F1, absolutely Lovely. Just go through the same procedure. Four mil pellet on the hook, expander, and then a few, probably putting between 10 and 15 micros in there. You don't want to overdo it, just keep them busy looking for the food. Tap them in, lay the rigging again, just keeping it like a pendulum, just away from the end of the pole tip, lowering it down, see the float just start the way up, lift it, and thinking in your mind then that the hook bait straightened out and then just lay it into position. And You're looking for an indication straight away, because the float's all set up, you're just dropping it to the bulk, reading it to the your float tip to your, to your bulk shot, and anything touching that bait, it can lift it up quite quickly because all the weight's there or she'll just shoot under. A 
and no need to strike either because when you're pellet fishing if you strike and pull harder you can take the pellet off the hook so it's just a gentle lift I was thinking in my mind the, the bait's on the bottom, the fish are mooching around down there and I'm just at dead depth every probably 30-40 seconds I just lift it afloat and drop it back into position. What I'm trying to do there is get the fish to see my pellet move and take that quicker. Because if you just sit there, I'm trying to make it happen by lifting the float and dropping it. If you just sit there you'll catch less fish. So it's a gentle lift and then lower it back into position. <laughs> Lovely little F1s. Beautiful little fish. Never seen up before. Absolutely immaculate, pristine condition. Right, just show you the rigs I'm using now. First rig I'm going to show you, I've set up two rigs. One is just a bulk and the other one's a spread bulk. And the main reason for that is if they do start to come up, the, up in the water, as I'm tapping a little bit of feed in. They're not going to come right up shallow because it, it's too cold. But it just gives me the option to fish through the water with the pellet as well, as opposed to dropping it down on a bulk uh, shotted rig. The one I started with is this rig of the bulk shot. I've got a six inch hook length. I've got an MXC 18 barbless spade end on a six inch hook length. In the summertime it may go down to four inch, but because I want a little bit of a drop, I've got a six inch hook length. Then I've got a bulk of number nine shots, and then nothing, and that's on top of the loop on the main line. That's 016 power micron to an 012 hook length. And the float that I'm using is one of my MP4s 4x14. And then as you can see, I've probably got 12, 14 inches between the pole tip and the float. And the main purpose of that bolt rig is that when I lower it in, as I've shown, I can lift it and just drop it in and I'll see the bite instant. Unlike if I'm fishing a rig through the water, which although you'll see some bites if it shoots off with it, sometimes they can take the pellet off the hook and they, they do when you're pellet fishing with a soft pellet, with an expander, they can take it off the hook and your float weights out and you're not seeing anything. But with a bolt rig, you see the bite much better because if you lower it down and they intercept the bait, the float will just go flat. It won't go down because it stopped the bolt shot from going down. So you instantly just lift up and you've got a fish on. But with the spread bulk, they can sometimes take the pellet off the hook without you seeing. And normally my preferred rig is a bulk shot. So you're lowering it down to the fish, lifting it up and then looking for an indication straight away. If I put that down and show you the spread bulk, it's the same float. The whole setup is the same, same flow MP4 4x14, 18 MXC1, 012 hook length, 016 main line, but I've got a number 10 shot there, which is on top of the loop on the main line, and that is where the bolt would be sitting on the other rig. And then I've just got number 9s spread out, probably a foot from that number 10 that's a dropper. Now you can spread them wide if you want, but I like to keep a sort of a close spread bulk over probably about five, six inches. So I know that's falling through the water on the drop, but a little bit faster so I can get the float to lift up and register and see any indication on the float. But even with that, sometimes they can have that expander pellet off the hook, unlike they can with a bolt rig. So I always start with the bolt rig, and if I start to miss bites, or I think they're coming up a little bit, I'll lay the rig and where I'm fishing the spread bulk through the water. Very simple but very effective. I've caught a few fish on that shorter line. I'm now just going to have a look on the longer line. I've, I've gone to about 8 metres and I've gone to 13. Um, 
obviously as it warms up a lot more you'll catch normally f1s carp you'll catch them in a couple of foot of water they're going to the shallow water but because we're only just coming out the cold snap they tend to be just down in the deeper water still but i'm going to try the longer line just to rest that shorter line but what i tend to do is in my pot i'll put in twice as the amount of pellets where i'm fishing feeding say a dozen pellets on the short line i'll put in probably 25 30 pellets and as i go out now going over my short line I can tap a couple of pellets on that short line to keep that going so if I'm still fishing it and then going on to my longer line I've still got some pellets in my little pot and so I can tap some in there as you can see and I've fed both lines without trying to do it twice it just saves time There's enough distance between those two lines as well for fish to settle on and feed without distracting from, from the other line. But it just gives you somewhere else to go to maybe nick a few more fish. Yeah, the bite straight away on that longer line, but I don't know if it's an F1 or it might be a little stocky carp, but it just felt a little bit bigger. I'd say that's a carp, but I um, just don't know because they're a little bit more lethargic where they've been cold. Oh no, that is a lovely F1. I don't know if that's a. Oh, that's a beauty. Well, it must be a new fish because I've never seen an F1 like that in here. Just don't look him, he's an absolute corker. I'll lift him up, let you see this one. He's an absolute beauty. Oh, full of life. Look at that beauty. Absolute gorgeous. Probably two and a half pound mint condition. What a beauty. Well that was on the, the longer line so just prove that just feeding one line it's giving me somewhere else to go and I've caught a lovely fish on it so we'll have another look and see what happens. Just hooked a proper carp that shook its head as I lifted up, thinking it was a small F1. Right, I think I might have got it under control. It's coming back. It's coming back. Just try and keep above it, you could bigger fish. So they're a bit more slow and lethargic, but that did shoot off. That soft eight to ten hollow, it really does the job, it's lovely. Oh, a bit ghostly. They do fight much harder, the ghosties. It's coming right down under the bank under here. There we go. How about that for a beauty? It's just over 10 pound here, B. Beautiful ghosty. Let's get him in the net.
Well, I've just had about six or seven fish, as quick as I could get in on that short line. Um, F1, small F1s, but I just feel the longer line's better, so I'm going back out on that longer line, because I've had a couple of carp on that line as well. But that'll give that short line rest, so I've been on there about half hour, and I've caught a lot of fish, but not as quick as I would on this longer line, so I'm just going to see if those fish are still there. I haven't fed it since, so I haven't fed it for probably 30, 35 minutes. But I'll put some feed in there before I come off it, so we'll see if they're there now. There we go. Lovely stamp fish to catch these are, beautiful fish. Oh, this is absolutely lovely. What can be better than catching a fish you put on soft pellet? What a place this rookery waters is. Well, I think we'll end on that one. What's better than catching one of them a put? I hope you enjoyed it. If you have, give it the thumbs up and hit subscribe.